So you want to make a sheath? Let's do it. Okay, so Roarbaugh Knife Works asked me to put together a sheath for one of his takes on a K-Bar. He's been producing a couple few of these, but they're all just a little bit different. Everything I do is custom, so I can't have templates and patterns built out. As close as I can get to anything uniform is cutting out my initial strap of three and a half inch that I use to form up the entire sheath. So I got lucky on this one. It happens to have a a square bolster or a square uh, hand guard, so I can just go straight in and line it up with a square edge, and then figure out how how long I need my sheath to be. Right now, I'm coming in right about there, so I'm going to come down an inch or two just to give myself some room. And square that off. I've got no skin in the game as to how you do this. Some people say you should edge these things while they're wet, some while they're dry. But I'm going to do mine ahead of time. And I'm just going to bevel the outside and inside of this guy before I get it soaking wet and get it formed up so that I don't have to fight with a bunch of curves later. And then once I get that set, off it goes into the bath. And I'm going to let that sit in there for a while. Not too terribly long, because i got a lot of prep work to do while that's happening. So as long as I take, it should take. Got some bubbles still coming out, but that's really about long enough. I don't want to completely saturate this thing and then never have it dry out again. I just take some of the excess moisture off of it. And then I came up <clears throat> with these wonderful little doohickeys so that I can match the height of the blade to the height of the handle. Just little shims, stick them under the blade so that it brings it up to full height. If I need one more, I can throw it in there. And they're skinny enough that they don't stick out beyond the edges of the knife. Wet forming is not a complex process. You just want to be sure of a couple few things. Make sure that wherever the tip of your knife is going to hit and on the underside that you have plenty of room all the way around to get stitching done once it folds over a quarter to three eighths of an inch and make sure that you're pushed uh, the the beveled edge is pushed tight up against that hand guard just bring it down a little bit give it some work and a real key here is that you got to trim your fingernails constantly if you don't keep really short nails you're inevitably going to stick a thumbnail in the side of one of these things when you're working on it and leave an impression that you won't be able to rub out the reason that i wet form is uh it i feel like it's a lot faster of a process than adding a welt because this leather is going to be pretty tough to cut through on the blade side or the or the tip <clears throat> but it will uh raise everything up high enough to protect my stitching on the outside edge. So that's why I do it this way. I've produced quite a few knives or quite a few sheaths and I have only one or two that ever came back to me uh, for repair work and it, mostly it's up towards the end here where the rivets go in where they just jab it into the sheath and, and cut it on the way in. My process on this is a little wonky. I want to refine it and get it better but for right now this is what I got. So I'm going to bring this folded over leftover piece that I got and bring it down far enough that I'm getting two things. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that 
this uh, rolled over piece for the belt loop extends beyond the butt of the, the knife so you're not poking yourself in the gut with the back side. And I also want to make sure that this end where I stitch it in um, falls inside the sheath so it, it's hidden a little bit and it doesn't um, interfere with the uh, rivets that I'm going to drive in on the top side. So right about there is good. Centered up in the middle. I'm going to drop this guy down on top. And then I'm going to put these marks in for the rivets on both the, the front and the back. While it's still a little bit elevated, up on this ramp. I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch or so on both sides. And give it a pretty thorough poke. And the reason I do this while it's still wet is because now I've got marks on the bottom side too. So I know where those roots are going to come through the bottom. All right, so here's a problem that's a pain in the butt, but not necessarily insurmountable. I need to figure out what I'm going to do for the belt loop on this thing, because I'm not going to leave it three and a half inches wide. So I got everything squared up to basically where it's going to fall. I got my knife lined up north and south on the back part. I'm pretty sure my top's good. First things first, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to give this guy a little poke right in the middle about where I want my retention to fall. That's where I'm going to drive that pin through to, for a rotating strap that's going to go across the top here. And then, using my trusty inch and a quarter wide ruler, I'm going to come underneath here. run that underneath the handle and then line it up north and or east and west to make sure that the that the uh, belt re belt loop is not going to come in at some kind of a weird angle um, and give me a forward or a rear cant on the knife so I'll make sure everything's lined up square and then just mark some points far enough back that I can uh, come back in and cut this at an angle um, and then drive all the way up on those. Okay, so I cheated and I cut these lines freehand once I got them marked out with the scratch all. And then once I get them down to that point where I, I said I wanted to stop, that was my point of no return. Then I'll just square these off, bring them straight out. And then I'm going to repurpose one of those two pieces with my handy dandy strap cutter set to an inch. Let's see if she's wide enough. It will be close, but we'll give it a shot. All right. And we got a retention strap that we used from a piece of waste off the edge. Next, I'm going to pull this down and mock it up where it would normally sit. Throw my sheath to match up my rivet holes because I'm technically done right here, give or take. And it's just excess material that I, I can save 
for a project later um, or that uh, it's just excess material that I don't have to dye. So that'll be for a small project for something else goes in the scrap bucket. We can set our wet formed piece off to the side to dry. And then I want to go ahead and bevel these edges front and back on both those pieces. And then all three assembly pieces will be together. I'm sure you're asking, hey, why not just do the taco style fold over um, fewer seams, less pain in the butt. But in reality, everybody seems to like the look of the, the finished edges front and back. Um, and I think these retain much better. And I they've get a, given me a real good service life. Those taco sheaths with anything thicker than about a four or five ounce leather, just then you wind up putting a V groover in there and trying to thin out the material. And, and it, it just doesn't seem very worker friendly to me. So that's why I do uh, the bottom and the top. All right, let's get these beveled up. When I get down to the end there, because I'm buttoning into another piece and I don't want to fork my own leather and tank it, it's just, as I get down to the end, I just come down straight and then I give it a little twist to roll it out. And twist. There's one for you ASMR junkies. Here's a nasty little trick that nobody's going to tell you. Wet leather and dry leather dye differently. So because I wet one down, I'm wetting them all down. Or I'm not going to get any kind of uniformity out of my dye job. And that's about good. Same process as before. Take a little bit of the extra moisture off of them. And I'm rolling these guys with uh, saddle tan. Thank goodness for old pillowcases. I'm just pulling a little excess off there that I don't want to sit and soak in. And I'll do the same thing with the big one. I'm not too hung up on the back because it's just a belt loop. I just don't want big white sections showing on the inside of that. It just kind of looks goofy. I'm only going to die down as far as what is going to be seen from the outside of the sheath. I don't care about this. As a matter of fact, I'd rather not <clears throat> put dye on it because it tends to be a little salty, acidic and it tends to interact with some of the finishes on some of the knives.
okay, next thing to get done is to finish all of the beveled edges and slick those up while I still have them as straight lines and they're easy to get to. Because once I start assembling components, then things get curvy and, and challenging to work on. I bought a refillable marker that uh, I filled with a, it's a one to three mix of token all in water. <coughs> and with a little bit of coaxing, compress it down to get the, the stuff flowing, get all my extraneous color off there from the last device. And I start running clear. And then I can just use that to edge. Any of those pieces that are exposed. This doesn't take a long time to start drying up, so I want to hit it when it's just still tacky, but not quite dried out yet. All right, edging is done. I think they're, I mean, they're not exactly glassy, but <clears throat> Those fibers are compressed enough that they're not going to come loose when that slides across somebody's belt several dozen thousand times. Um, okay, so we got uh, three more things to do, and then we can start assembling. It's a K-bar. You need to add a sharpening stone pouch to the junk bucket. <laughs> Perfect.
I'm going to assemble this pouch separate from the sheath and then add it on the whole thing on later. I find it's just easier if I put this all together um, and then add it. I'll punch my holes through here and then uh, I'll mark them on the sheath so I know where my holes on the sheath fall. I'll punch that and then lay it on top and just stitch it all together through three layers of material. All right, so there we go. That front pocket for the stone is attached. It looks good enough to pass muster. Before I get this thing all stuck together and the inside becomes inaccessible, I want to make sure that I get one last process done on there. Um, I'm using rig gun grease to lubricate the inside. It protects the metal from rust. It helps... Uh, condition the leather from underneath slowly over time and uh, like I said that dye can tend to react with metal so by covering it with the rig it keeps it from discoloring the metal at all if it gets too sticky we'll throw a little beeswax on the tines When it comes to stitching, um, small stuff I'll do just on the bench, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over and make it work. But for larger projects, it, sometimes you need a third hand. There's such a thing as a stitching pony. And all it is is basically a, a little device to help you hold this 
work piece while you're using both hands to stitch. So I didn't have the money for one. So I created one and essentially it's just a pair of uprights with a clamp, holds a piece in the middle, put leather in there to protect it, brown side, black side. Use a stitch groover as opposed to a uh, a caliper to set the distance from the stitch line to the edge because those calipers tend to gore too much of the material on the stitch edge and I don't want that. The small disadvantage of using the stitch groover is as it gouges out material <clears throat> right on the edge here because this metal piece is following the line of the stitches kind of zigzag <clears throat> it'll create an uneven wavy line um, once I cut that and edge it that removes all of that wave out of it and you won't even see it and then the other thing while I'm here I want to mark this real quick um, for this retention strap just so I can get that snap set right there in the middle and cut this down so that it doesn't overhang the handle too much and then i've got those marked i'll set this one set it down and then use that as a guide to figure out where my strap top button is going to be set there we are got everything sized and cut down Got edges beveled front and back, um, so I'll dye these edges to match the sheath, get these little spots that I missed, and uh, and then attach that hardware and I'll shine it up and be good to go. And this is my trade secret, so don't tell anybody. Um, plastic dip, the thing that you coat like lineman's pliers with and stuff to give yourself a better surface to grip on. Any component that's going to be metal and touch the uh, either the leather or the metal in the sheath, like rivets on the inside, snaps on the outside, I'm going to cover in that um, thin layer of plastic. Well, this is fun. So one other thing that as a service to my blacksmith, he... Uh, he makes these stack leather handles, um, but I'll finish them up for him. Um, he gets them shaped into, you know, the right shape and then sands them down. And I will buff those out and smooth them out, give it that sheen. Water and tokenol. <laughs> 